January 1986, I was invited uh, by Dr. Swaminathan to be part of a team that went to, to Cambodia, then known as Kampuchea. And it was Gurdiv Kush, it was Don Puckridge and myself. And so we went there for about 10 days in January uh, 86. Because it is such a compelling uh, example of how genetic conservation is, is so critical, particularly uh, you know, for countries like Cambodia that are so reliant on agriculture, and in this case, so reliant on rice production. So the ERI program came in and um, we, we, we looked around and, and we, were, we, we were shocked, I would say, in that first mission. We, we couldn't quite believe what we saw, um, but we started to talk to people, we started to talk to the government officials, we started to talk to everyday folks. The varieties were lost because with all that dislocation, with the fact that everybody moved from the countryside and then they went through this horrendous period of uh, you know, work slave camps basically. Uh, and also being told you can't plant this deep water rice and, and people were so hungry they ate their rice seeds, right? So you basically lost so much of the genetic resources, the, the rice genetic resources, which were essential in Cambodia because 85% of the fields were, 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 were rain fed. However, we have a good news story and the good news story was that luckily well, probably more than luck, very strategically, Erie had sent in some collectors. Uh, I, I, I don't personally know the names who, who actually did this, but I believe it was uh, 72 and 73, just towards the period where the production and the, you know, the turmoil began, there had been a collection of um, rice varieties, traditional rice varieties. And uh, you know, I believe over 750 varieties, probably more than that, were actually collected and stored in the Erie Gene Bank. So we did our uh, checks on, we called up the folks in the Gene Bank and we found out that, uh, yes, indeed, we've got all these varieties that were collected at that point about 13 or 14 years previously. So over a period of, of several years, part of the Erie program in Cambodia was actually to reintroduce those varieties. And we had one plant, we had a couple of plant breeders there, um, Ram Chowdhury, um, Edwin Javier, and they worked on reintroduction of these traditional varieties. And many of those varieties, then farmers, you know, grabbed them, went with them, multiplied them. I can't underestimate the importance of the human resources. And as I mentioned, the human resources had been decimated um, as a result of the war. People had either been killed or they'd fled as refugees and, and disappeared off the map as far as Cambodia was concerned. So a major initial focus of our work was on capacity building. And over you know, a period of about 12, 15 years or so, um, about 6,000 Cambodians were trained by IRI at all levels. Many of them, of course, were trained in country. And at one point we had a team of about five or six Erie scientists working there. But many of them, we, you know, we brought them back to Erie. And to this day, if you go and look at the organizational chart of, of Cardi, and you look at it over the last several years, the people who were running the organization, the, the current director, for example, Makara, has his PhD in Australia, he's one of our counterparts, one of the trainees. The first training course in the world conducted by ERI training team in overseas uh, uh, in Cambodia, that was in Cambodia. I was selected to be a trainee on the rice production, about the rice production in Cambodia. Uh, I learned from that very quick. So after the, that training course, they selected me as a trainer for the next training courses on rice production. In 1995, I've been in Erie for my first Erie training course, only one. I have only one Erie training, training course at Erie. We call GEU, Genetic Evaluation and Utilization. I, I was very happy during that course, even three months, but I learned a lot. I learned, I learned a lot and everywhere I can go because I know Erie people, 
by that time đột ngày come back that I, I continue as a rider right by training at the uh, so in 1998 I was successfully uh, getting scholarship and uh, in I was study in uh, uh, University of Queensland that when when we went in in January uh, 86 the production in the country was around two million tons the um, average yield was just over one ton per hectare and I look at it today um, what is it almost uh, 30 years later right um, total production in the country is is around nine million tons all right the country is an exporter, again. In fact, for the last several years, the country has been exporting somewhere around 800,000 to a little over a million tons per year. They've really developed their export, uh, export of rice as a, as a source of income. Cambodia itself is a, a great credit to uh, Erie, and uh, I think initially the vision of our Director General, Dr. Swaminathan, and consistent long-term um, partnership with with that country um, through thick and thin uh, challenges of funding. Uh, for the most part, Australia was the, was the big supporter, but we were able over the years to diversify that level of support. Um, and one of the key uh, successes is we've been able to connect Cambodian scientists with scientists in other countries. We always wanted that. We didn't, we didn't want them to be dependent only on Erie. First, the Israeli had to provide more scientific and information to NAS. Very useful for us to use that, translate it, to explain it to our policy maker for them to consider and setting up policy frameworks, objective for the future. Kindly, uh, 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 the technologies that ERI develops should be uh, provided uh, uh, to the NAS and 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 uh, and help you know to create environment to NAS to be getting more and more responsible for that involvement you know the last one but not least, the supporting in research capacity in rice improvement from ERI is a vital need. ERI could not neglect it on that. ERI has to strengthen in that.